the previous session, uh, we have completed the first module uh, in which we have gone through the vector analysis and also the Coulomb's law, uh, which gave you the expression for the force uh, between two point charges, right? And from that, we have seen the uh, electric, uh, sorry, electric field intensity, electric field intensity due to different kinds of charges, charge distributions we have seen due to uh, point charge, line charge, surface charge, volume charge distributions, right? And we have also seen some numerical examples and also we have gone through electric flux and electric flux density, right? So all these things we have completed in the first module. So today we will begin the next module, the second module, wherein there are two topics actually. One is uh, Gauss's law and divergence and another unit you have is regarding energy and potential, okay? So the first one is regarding Gauss's law and divergence. So this, we will start from where we had left with in the previous module. So we have seen, uh, uh, the Faraday's law, right? Faraday, apart from that, he also conducted some experiment with the two concentric spheres, okay? Two concentric spheres, and he found that uh, two concentric spheres, in between the two concentric spheres, if you take any imaginary sphere, okay, then the charge, the total electric flux enclosed by that imaginary sphere will be the total charge enclosed by the sphere, okay? So that, uh, actually, the mathematical form for that experiment was given by another person. And his name is Gauss. Okay. So that came to be known as Gauss's law. So the generalizations of Faraday's experiment, it leads to this law, that is Gauss's law. So this is also an important uh, law as far as this subject is concerned. So the result of this and the applications of this, it is very, very important in electrostatics. So the statement of Gauss's law is the electric flux passing through any closed surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface okay so this is what was states in his law that is the electric flux passing through any closed surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface so to do this first we should have one closed surface a closed surface means there will be some, uh, some volume, okay so which will be yeah the outer cover of that is the surface that is called the surface. the flux you know what is flux the lines of force is called the flux right the electric flux passing through that closed surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface it looks very simple but you know you, you need to prove this so mathematically uh, if you want to express this, you know, the symbol for flux is psi, right? Symbol for flux is psi and charge is Q. The flux is equal to the charge enclosed within that surface. So you might be asked to state and prove law. In that case, we prove this particular law. So for that, we, need, we will consider a closed surface, okay? Uh, random closed surface of surface area S. So consider a charge Q. Let Q be the charge which is enclosed within this particular closed surface of area S. Okay, so consider an elemental surface area. Let this be the elemental surface area with area ds. Elemental means a small surface area with area ds. Okay, so uh, that ds, you know, it is a vector which is equal to the area ds multiplied by the unit vector in the di normal direction, that is perpendicular direction an. An cap indicates the unit vector which is perpendicular to this area. Okay, uh, let the elemental flux passing through this elemental surface be d psi. And that d psi, you know, the flux will be equal to d dot ds. This we have seen in the previous module. Flux will be equal to d dot ds, right? Okay. So this is because, you know, the flux density, d is the flux density. Density is flux divided by area. d is equal to d psi divided by ds. That's why d psi is d dot ds, okay? Now, the total electric flux. See, d psi is the differential flux or the elemental flux passing through this elemental surface. If you want the total flux passing through the complete or the closed surface, that can be obtained by integrating this equation over the surface, right? Integrating this equation over the entire surface, we will get the total flux, total electric flux passing through this closed surface. So integration of d psi, that will be equal to integration of d dot ds. So what this integration with the circle here indicates is the uh, closed surface integration over the entire surface, entire closed surface, okay? This indicates closed surface integration, okay, with the subscript S here. So integration and differentiation of psi, you know, it leads to psi, that is equal to closed integral of D dot DS. D dot DS, you know, magnitude of D multiplied by magnitude of DS into cos of the angle between them. If the angle between this D and DS is alpha, then it will be cos alpha, okay? So psi is integration of closed surface integral of D DS cos alpha. This we will take as equation number D. So we know that the relation between D and E Okay, D is given as epsilon into E, where epsilon is the permittivity of the medium. 
and if you consider a point charge you also know e if you consider magnitude without direction you know, e is q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square we have seen this in the previous module right so e is q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square uh, for a point charge since q is a point charge we have considered you can take it as q by 4 pi epsilon r square then d is epsilon into e multiply this with epsilon epsilon is already there in the denominator so what we get d is q divided by 4 pi r square right D is for Q divided by 4 pi R square. So in this equation 2, if you substitute this Q by 4 pi R square, you will get this. In place of uh, D, we have Q by 4 pi R square. So Q divided by 4 pi, you can keep outside the integral because it is not related to the surface. If we are indicating with respect to the surface, you have only D S cos, cos alpha divided by R square inside the integration. Now, this term D S cos alpha divided by R square is called the elemental solid angle okay which is indicated by omega the solid angle means the angle made by the solid you know you have seen the angles uh, which are made by certain lines right but when you consider a solid like the angle of a cone you know that is called the solid angle and that is indicated by omega the elemental solid angle is d omega and this particular thing that is ds cos alpha by r square is the elemental solid angle which is you know, if you want the definition, that is actually the ratio of the surface area subtended to the square of the radius. That's why we have cos alpha divided by r square, where r is the radius. Okay. The total solid angle subtended by any closed surface is 4 pi steradians. Okay. So that means if you consider a sphere, the solid angle of the sphere is 4 pi steradians. So the total solid angle subtended by any closed surface is 4 pi steradians. So, uh, if you integrate this over the surface, uh, you will get the of ds cos alpha by r square. If you integrate it, you will get the total solid angle. So when you integrate that, you know, this is d omega. It is nothing but 4 pi. So if you substitute this 4 pi in this equation, okay, so you will get q by 4 pi into 4 pi. That 4 pi and 4 pi, you know, it gets cancelled. That's why psi will be equal to q. Okay, this is the proof of Gauss's law, where actually we are showing that the flux is equal to the charge enclosed. Okay, the total electric flux passing through any closed surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that closed surface. Okay, so this is what we have in the uh, uh, Gauss's law, wherein we are stating uh, this particular thing and we are proving it mathematically that the flux passing through any closed surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface. Yeah. So this is about Gauss's law. This is uh, one of the very important questions uh, as far as the exam is concerned. Next, you have applications of Gauss's law. Okay, now applications of Gauss's law. Uh, we have two important applications. One is to find the electric field intensity due to symmetrical charge distributions. Okay, so when you consider uh, Gauss's law, we are speaking about a closed surface. Okay, so if any charge is symmetric, for example, if you consider a point charge or a line charge or a surface charge or whatever, we need to first cover that charge with the surface. And that surface has to be you know, it should cover the charge symmetrically in all the directions. So that surface which you use to close or cover it is called the Gaussian surface. Okay, so you need to use a Gaussian surface. Select a Gaussian surface such that uh, the lines, uh, the field lines D and E, okay, the field lines D and E, they are uh, normal to the chosen surface and they are also constant over that surface. Okay, so you need to uh, consider this, that they are normal, that means they are perpendicular to the chosen surface and also they are constant over the entire surface so if d and e if they are normal to the closed surface the angle between d and ds is zero okay so you have seen in the previous case there's an angle between d and ds alpha right? so if this d is normal to the surface see ds means it is normal to this if d is also normal then the angle alpha is zero right d and ds they are in the same line if d and ds are in the same line then alpha is zero if alpha is zero that means the cos zero is one so that eliminates that cost term, okay? So that will eliminate the cost term uh, because the angle between the zero. Uh, that is one thing, that is one advantage you have. So the first condition, between the dot product from that integral, that cos alpha, you know, we can just eliminate that thing. So it is just d, d ds, multiplication of d with ds. And the second one will, uh, that means that it is independent of the position on the surface. So d will be independent of the surface. So d you can keep outside. D can be kept outside the uh, integral. Okay, so these are the things you need to consider when you select a Gaussian surface. Uh, one more application of Gauss's law is to find the charge enclosed in the differential volume element. So both of them we will see. First we will see the application of Gauss's law to find electric field intensity due to symmetrical charge distributions. So that first kind of charge distribution you have, 
is a point charge. Okay, electric field intensity EFI due to a point charge using Gauss's law. We have already seen the electric field intensity of point charge in the first module. There we have used Coulomb's law. We have also seen electric field intensity due to a line charge and also surface charge. Right. For the same thing, uh, we will try to find the expression for electric field intensity due to point charge, line charge, and surface charge using Gauss's law in this particular case. Okay. So first we will consider for point charge. So consider a point charge Q. Okay. As shown here, consider this point charge Q. We are interested to find the electric field intensity at a certain point P. Okay. So this point P is at a distance R from this point Q. Okay. Uh, we are required to find the electric field intensity at this point P. It is at a distance of R from the point charge Q. So it is in the direction of the line joining the two charges. Right. So, uh, sorry, line joining the point P with this charge. Right. So for the point charge, which is the best surface, which can enclose it in all the directions. The best surface for a, for a point charge will be a sphere. Right, will be a sphere. So the Gaussian surface that we will select is a spherical surface of the radius r. Okay, and the center of the surface will be at q. So this you need to imagine this as a sphere. That is, this is in all the three dimensions, not a circle. It is in all the three dimensions. It is like a ball. Okay, the q is at the center of that sphere, and p is on the surface of the sphere. The distance between the center and the surface of the sphere is r. That is the radius of the sphere. Okay, so this particular surface which encloses the point charge. In all the directions symmetrically, that is the Gaussian surface. Okay, so now we have to apply the Gauss's law. According to Gauss's law, the electric flux coming out of this surface, the Gaussian surface, must be equal to the total charge enclosed within that surface. Now, what is the total charge enclosed? That is Q. Okay, total charge enclosed is Q. That is psi is equal to Q. We take this as equation number one. The electric flux density, you know, electric flux density is by flux divided by area. In simple terms, flux density is flux divided by Area. The flux is psi. Area you can take as s, and the direction is ar. Ar is in the radial direction. Okay. So you know the flux is q. What about the surface area? When you consider area, it is the area of the surface of the sphere. You know the area of the surface of the sphere. If the radius of the sphere is r, the area of the spherical surface is 4 pi r square. Okay. Area of the spherical surface is 4 pi r square. So if you substitute this in equation number one, sorry, equation number two, what do you get? Psi is equal to q. And uh, d is equal to q by, sorry, uh, yeah, psi is equal to q, area is 4 pi r square, so you, we get d is q divided by 4 pi r square into r. Now, you know, d is equal to epsilon into e, right? d is equal to epsilon into e, so what is e is equal to? e will be equal to d divided by epsilon. e will be equal to d divided by epsilon. So if you divide this by epsilon, so you will get q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square into r. The unit is volts per meter. So if you compare this equation with the equation that you obtained using Coulomb's law, it is exactly the same, right? So that's why you know we can and this method it is more simpler than using the previous one. So using Gauss's law, we can get the electric field intensity of uh, charges if the charges are symmetrical in nature, right? So this is for a point charge. Similarly, you can try for line charge and surface charge. Okay. So if you consider a line charge, if you want to find the electric field intensity due to line charge using Gauss's law, we will consider a infinite line charge, rho L, uh, I mean, the charge density is rho L columns per meter. We want to find the frequency at a certain point P. Okay, so if this point P is located at a perpendicular distance of rho from line, right, we want to find the electric field intensity due to this line charge at the point P. So can anyone tell me which is the best surface I can choose to enclose this line charge, cylindrical, right? I had told this, you know, while discussing the line charge also, you need, we, that's why we had considered the cylindrical coordinate system when we considered uh, line charge, right? Yeah. So it will be a cylindrical surface, right? A cylindrical surface can enclose this line charge in all the directions symmetrically, right? So that's why we will construct a cylindrical surface as the Gaussian surface. Uh, let the radius of the cylinder be rho and the height of the cylinder be l okay the radius of the cylinder is rho and height of the cylinder is l okay so then uh, according to Gauss law you know the electric field intensity or the electric flux in this case it comes out only in the radial direction and that is equal to the total charge enclosed within that particular surface so even though the line is of length l the cylinder is of uh, length sorry line is infinite the cylinder is of length l so if you consider psi that will be equal to the charge enclosed right within this what is enclosed is charge is charge density multiplied by length, right? Because, you know, when you consider charge density, it will be the charge divided by length. 
So charge is rho L into L. So if you consider the cylinder, it will be charge density multiplied by the length. You take this as equation number one. Then the electric flux density that is given by D, that is flux divided by area. And the direction is A rho in this case, because it is the radial direction. In cylindrical coordinates, rho is the radius. So psi divided by S, psi is rho L into L. S is the surface area of a cylinder. The surface area of a cylinder of the radius rho and length L is given by 2 pi rho into L. Right? The surface area is 2 pi rho into L. If you substitute these in the equation for D, Q is rho L into L. Uh, area is 2 pi rho into L. So L and L gets cancelled. You get 2 pi, uh, sorry, rho L divided by 2 pi rho into A rho cap. Now, electric field intensity is D divided by epsilon. If you divide this by epsilon, you get rho L divided by 2 pi rho into epsilon, A rho cap. Units is volts per meter. So this is again same as whatever we have obtained in the uh, previous module. That is the expression for electric field intensity due to a line charge of uh, infinite loop. Right? That is rho L divided by 2 pi rho into epsilon into A rho cap. Right? So here, you know, it is uh, more simpler than the method that we have uh, obtained, uh, used earlier. But if you are asked to you do using Coulomb's law, you have to do that. But when you are asked to do using Gauss's law, you can emphasize that. So next one is uh, using a sheet of charge, sorry, electric field intensity to a sheet of charge or a surface charge using Gauss's law. For this, you know, we will consider an infinite sheet of charge uh, with charge density rho s coulomb per meter square. Here, since it is a surface charge, unit will be coulombs per meter square, which is placed along the xz plane. xz plane in the sense, if this is xyz coordinates, so it is placed in this particular direction, in the xz that is perpendicular to your screen, whatever you are watching. The density is rho s coulombs per meter square. We are trying to find the electric field intensity at a certain point p. Okay. Consider uh, so, which is the best surface? You know, the best surface which can enclose a sheet will be a sheet itself. I mean, a rectangular box. If you consider a rectangular box, something like this, uh, two of its parallel faces, so it, it can enclose this in both the directions. Okay, two of its faces with area a. You are finding it at a certain point p. So these faces are parallel to the particular sheet. This will be the Gaussian surfaces, which can enclose in both the directions symmetrically. And whatever electric field intensity you are finding, it will be in this direction, E, in Y direction. So according to Gauss's law, electric flux coming out of the surface, it is equal to the total charge enclosed. The total charge enclosed is Q, which is equal to the surface, sorry, the density, charge density multiplied by the area. Charge density multiplied by surface area, that is S in this case. Okay. The flux density, you know, that is given by flux divided by area. The flux is this, rho s into s. And the area, since there are two phases, you know, you can take it as this, if this surface has area A, and this is another A, that will be two times of A. Okay. So this will be two times of A. So that's why uh, in, in case of, uh, sorry, in case of this, uh, you can consider this as this area as s. Okay. So you can take this rho s into A in terms of s. I take this as rho s into a and this will also be 2a so this will be 2a so that's why it will be rho s into a divided by 2a so we are the same they get cancelled so it is rho s by 2 this is flux density flux density is rho s by 2 action is a one in the y direction now the electric field intensity is d divided by epsilon so if you divide this by epsilon you get rho s divided by 2 epsilon into a by cap right so if you compare this with the equation that you obtained previously it is exactly the same that is rho s divided by 2 epsilon into a by cap right so this way you can employ Gauss's law to get the electric field intensity due to uh, symmetrical charge distributions. We have seen that examples of point charge, line charge, and surface charge or a sheet of charge, right? So in the next class, we will see application of Gauss's law to get the charge enclosed within a differential volume element and also some numerical examples based on that, okay?